Welcome back to another episode of the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and today we have a couple guests joining the show. Really looking forward to that. First up, we're going to have Big Fork Valkyries head coach, Courtney Gunlock. They recently won the state basketball title for the first time in school history. We'll talk to Coach Gunlock about winning that state title, what it meant with this special team. Also, having the opportunity to coach two of her daughters on the team, and what Big Fork Thinking with the move to Class A next season, they're going to be jumping up a class, so that should be exciting. What a send-off winning the state title in your final year. We'll get to that shortly. And we have a conversation with Fritz Neighbor of the Daily Interlake coming up. He'll help us recap that Western AA basket, excuse me, state basketball AA tournament. Last weekend, we recapped the Western AA tournament. That was a lot of fun. But we'll get into that state basketball talk for AA with Fritz. We're going to talk to Coach Gunlock about the Vals. Awesome stuff. Just a quick reminder before we dive into all that. Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Voted the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad. It's been a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more information. That's nomadgcs.com for more info. All right, y'all. Big Fork Fouls, state champions, exciting stuff. The Big Fork boys finished third at the state basketball tournament for Class B. As far as Glacier, the Wolfpack, the boys, they came in third as well. Impressive stuff. Anytime you get a trophy at state, that's awesome. The Flathead girls, they made it to the state title game. They did take runner-up. They fell in that game, but awesome stuff making it that far. Let's get to our two guests. First off, we're going to talk to Coach Gunlock, and then we'll get to the convo with Fritz. Let's recap an epic season of prep basketball in Northwest Montana. All righty. Calling in today is the head coach of the Class B state champion, Big Fork Valkyries, Courtney Gunlock. The Vals beat Big Timber in the Class B title game this past Saturday to finish 26-0 and earn the first ever girls basketball title in Vals history. Thank you so much for joining me today, Coach. I just wanted to start by congratulating you and on the success this year of your team. I know I said that off air, but might as well say it again on the air and give you the opportunity to reflect on this season and just kind of give credit to your players on the awesome season. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of still surreal to me. I think still trying to let it all sink in that we uh, went undefeated and, and got the first uh, state championship for Big Fort Girls basketball in school history um you know i've said it many times in the paper i think and stuff but this was just a very special group of girls this year um that just they're unselfish they wanted this more than anything it was the first year that i had that my my seniors were my make my head i was the head coach when they came in as freshmen so it was kind of the first year that i had all the players that i started with and you know we we started when they were freshmen, trying to change the culture, trying to make make them believe that they could do this. Um, and they did their senior year, which was pretty special. Yeah, that's extremely special. Um, I had the opportunity to watch your guys. I just watched the stream quite a bit in the tournament, but played very selfless basketball, very team first. And just like you said, just takes a special group to play that style. And awesome to see that. Um I was just wondering if you kind of wanted to tell our audience a little bit about just your basketball background and how you got into coaching. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I played for a really small school on the High Line. It was called Kremlin Guilford KG. It's actually consolidated, consolidated again in North Star. Um, we had nine girls on the team my senior year when we took state, which was pretty, pretty special. We had to have a boy practice with us most mm-hmm. practices. But a uh, little tiny town, so, you know, it's a big deal when you win state at any level um, and not, not a lot to experience that. Um, I, I was MVP of the state tournament that year and went on to play college basketball at Carroll for four years. So that was kind of my background as a player. I never planned on coaching truthfully um, kind of got talked into it when I, when people knew I was a basketball player and I started with the eighth grade program my first year and then um, was under Jamie and Jason Grindy when they were, uh, coaching at Big Fork, <clears throat> and then it was they stepped down because they wanted to watch watch their daughter play college ball, and was like, "Well, what am I going to do?" <laughs> so I stepped into the role knowing I had two daughters coming up, and I knew I would struggle watching someone else probably coach them in the stands. So I took it on. 
<laughs> well, well said. Um, you know, as somebody who I, I had a cup of tea coaching youth sports back in the day, I kind of fell into it myself. One of those things. Same thing. I played a little football here and there, and all of a sudden, hey, you want to try coaching, and you give it a go. So it is it's fun and. You kind of fall in love with it. So I have a lot of passion for coaching as well. So much respect there. Um, speaking of your daughters, Pray, uh, Brayden and Peyton, they were both key players on the state championship team. Um, I did want to just ask you a little, you kind of brought it up, but just kind of how do you balance, you know, coaching and then putting on the parent hat as well? Because, you know, there's always that balance to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I told probably one of my best friends, and she's also one of my assistant coaches, Brandy Couture, that, hey, you're going to help, have to help me with some of the constructive feedback with my daughters. And she's amazing. You know, it is a struggle. There's times where it's a little bit trying. And and she's been able to mitigate that with me and really help step in and and uh, help manage that mother-daughter uh, dynamic, I guess. And, uh, you know, I was told, and I did take this advice to heart, is don't take anything home. So when we're home, we don't talk about basketball. We'll watch film and stuff, but we don't we don't talk about what they should be doing or what they need to be doing differently. Um, and I think that's been a healthy boundary. Oh, very well said coach. And like I said, I only had a cup of tea coaching, but there is something to that. If a parent's trying to lay it on their kid versus another coach, you know, maybe I've, I've had parents come to me and say, Hey, can you talk to them about this? Let's work on that. They, they can respond a little differently and awesome. And yeah, kudos to your daughters for, you know, going through it. I'm sure it's a, it's a great process. It has, it's fun for sure for everyone. And, um, as far as my last question for you guys, like oh, like I said, congrats on the big win. I don't want to jump too far ahead here, but you will be moving to Class A next year. Um, only fitting that the Vals grabbed a state title in the final year competing in Class B. So just that being said, um, just kind of expectations for jumping up a class. Like I said, I don't want to move too far ahead, let this one still sink in, but just kind of the excitement to that and what you're looking forward to. You know, we, we lose our size, so... Um, you know, I lose Maddie Chapey as the scout may do. Um, and then Ellie Dort that comes off the bench. But, you know, I think I think it's gonna be a challenge for us. I think we're gonna have to figure out it's gonna be a different look for our team next year. Um, we won't be as big. And I know that there's some some taller, you know, gals in class A, so we're gonna have to figure out that dynamic. But I'm excited. I'm excited to um just I think we're gonna have closer games and not have to travel as far as one thing but it's, it's just exciting to to take on a new challenge as well and I know the girls are excited about it definitely yeah it has that feeling around just the other big fork sporting programs just you know there's a level of excitement just like you said new challenge well said um my last question for you again thank you so much for your time today um just kind of final thoughts on this 2022-2023 season the state championship run just kind of final thoughts you know, I just, I'm just so proud of these girls. I, I told them this was our goal from the get-go from this year. And I said, you know, we take one game at a time. We don't ever overlook anybody, you know, and they, they bought into the system. They believed in each other and believed in us as coaches. And truly it was a very special year that, I mean, to, to be a state championship team and then to be undefeated on top of it, that doesn't happen very often. No, a hundred percent coach. Couldn't agree more. And like you said, just that ability to take it one game at a time, that that's really what stood out to me the most. It really is takes a special group of players to not let that, you know, you start looking at that zero in the loss column halfway through the year, you get a little excited. So, no, that really does take a special group, level-headed players and level-headed coaching staff. So kudos to you guys as an entire group, coaching staff, players, school. You know, that's just special for everyone, the town of Big Fork. So, Thank you so much for your time, Coach. If there's anything else you want to throw out there, feel free. If not, congratulations on that state championship, and just thank you so much. No, thank you. It was, it was amazing. So it will be a great memory forever. What, couldn't have said that any better. Thank you, Coach. You have a great rest of your day. Everybody, that was Courtney Gunlock. Thank you again, Coach. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. All right. Awesome stuff there. The Big Fork Valkyries. Took home the first ever state title in school history. Special stuff. Like I said, I didn't have the opportunity to go out to the tournament in Great Falls, but I was tuning in online, watching the games. Just a team that played a selfless style of basketball. You have the, the dynamic with Coach Gunlock and coaching her two daughters, and I appreciate her sharing some insight about that. And it's just, a, it was a special group, special feel. I have a friend who, big sports fan back in the day, he'd say, every once in a while you get these teams of destiny, 
and Big Fork, it kind of felt like one of those teams of destiny. I talked with Jeremy Weber of – he works for uh, – he covers Big Fork Eagle, works with the Interlake before the season, and I just remember him saying, "This they're going to be a team to watch. You know, he, he, he didn't put any too crazy expectations, but he's like, you're going to want to tune into those vowels. And, of course, sure enough, state champ. So awesome stuff. Thanks again to Coach Gunlock. More stuff's coming soon on the sports now, but thank you all for tuning in. What an awesome season of prep basketball in Montana. More to come soon. All right, joining us on the Interlake Sports Now is Fritz Neighbor. Fritz was out in attendance at the Class AA State Tournament in Butte this past weekend. A lot of fun action out there. Fritz, thank you as always for taking the time to join me. Just kind of starting out, wanted to talk a little bit about some of the players who stood out, kind of your all-tournament teams, and then we'll dive into how the Flathead Bravettes and the Glacier Wolf Pack did out there as well. I know, the local teams did pretty good. You know, Flathead being in their girls championship game for the first time since winning it in 2001 that was a it was a little bit excruciating at times because they just uh, couldn't get a shot to fall um had several chances to build on a four-point lead and didn't happen so billy Zwet comes through billy Zwet was big and uh but it took it at him i mean kennedy moore was six two but west has at least two girls taller um both the pierce sisters so and just like that i mean three of uh, off my all tournament season, which uh, <laughs> I voted for. Um, looking at the girls, I had to go with Layla Baum and the Billings West Guard. She made enough big plays each night, kind of shepherded things as a, as a, the tournament went forward. Um, pretty ornery, pretty tough defender. Uh, made some key shots. And, you know, you, you kind of go with the criteria that you pick the MVP from the winning team and Billings, Billings West won it. So you go with Baum in there, and then uh, I had to pick Kennedy Moore to be on the first team. And uh, Lowell Peterson, who runs the Montana Sports Memories website, does all our stats. He collected the ballots, and he asked for 12 players. So this might take a minute. But um, uh, I, since the Ivy took third, I had to pick last year's MVP, Brianna Williams, as the number three spot. And then uh, Felgate took four. So I picked Chloe Larson, um, who's a junior. She'll be a, a, another tough player to watch next year. I have... Alex Tolby in there from Hellgate, the 6'6 girl, but she sat out the consolation game with a sore shin. Um, hopefully it's nothing serious, but they kind of a precaution and not the most important game in the world. It's not like they're playing the, the late game Saturday night. So she sat out, but I still had her in the top seven because she's such a force when she is in there. Um, running on my top five was Courtney Grossman from West. She didn't shoot very well Saturday night. Not a lot of girls did, but she had a huge three. To put him ahead for good. And my second five starts with Avery Chouinard, who hit four three pointers in the title game. And, you know, um, sometimes it's uh, it's hard on a shooter. She's a good shooter, but she's kind of forced to play point guard, especially with Maddie Moy hurt part of the season. So that's somebody who uh, might have been well served to have another point guard to take the pressure off her ball handling. And uh, maybe she would have, might have made a few more shots, but she made plenty. And she starts my second five. I mentioned Colville already, and then I got to make put in the six three and six four Pierce girls from West Sydney and Brooklyn. They were a force. Running out my top ten is Maddie Moy. Um, I should mention here that uh, the official stats that they handed out had fourteen points in the semifinal win Friday night. She had seventeen. It's on my play, but play. sometimes uh, it's a relief when you go there and you don't have to keep your own stats, and then you count on them to be accurate. But they uh, they missed three points for Friday night. She had seventeen. And then uh, 11 and 12, I went with Taylor Black from Bozeman. Uh, Bozeman won three games all regular season, then won three in the postseason. And, and then uh, Cadence Culture from Big Sky, who's just so smooth, just a sophomore. Big Sky's going to be a force next next couple years because their two best players and two of the best in the West are a sophomore coacher and a freshman, Avery uh, Decoy. So that's the girls. And it was, uh, it was a good tournament. Yeah, it seems like the West was well represented in the East. It sounds like there's just a lot of size out there, a lot of great players. 
Glad that it was such a good tournament. Flathead, like we said, came up just short of the big game. But, hey, the, the fact you make it there is special. And Schoenard, heck of a shooter. You mentioned that. It's not something I had thought about, maybe playing a little off the ball there. Yeah, get those extra open looks. But, no, overall great stuff. And I, I wasn't aware that B Big Sky, the duo, was a freshman and a sophomore. So can only imagine that team being a big problem for the next three years, definitely, at least. So awesome stuff. As for the boys, if you kind of want to dive into that, uh, great stuff so far, Fritz. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, that title game that Hellgate and West played, it was kind of a it was a battle. Uh, West was really physical. They were physical Friday night when they beat Glacier. They were, they got down a little bit to Hellgate and they really started up in the pressure and there weren't a lot of foul calls being called. And I thought I thought the, the Golden Bears are gonna make a run here. And then the next time I looked up it was a twenty four point game. And Connor Dick, basically, um, the Hellgate kid that we both watched last week. He just basically smoothed it out for him. He just was so good in transition. Um, West would make a three-point play or hit a three-pointer, and then Hellgate would uh, um, get Connor Dick open for a layup and transition, get one stop, make another basket, and they just kept increasing the lead. And It kind of didn't seem like it was a 20-point 20, 20 game, but it just it turned out that way. They just, they just really uh, took over there for about a four-minute stretch in the fourth quarter and put it away. And... Uh, just a good team. Fun to watch. Um, West's best player, I thought, was Cooper Tyson. I'm so old, I remember Calvin Tyson, his dad, playing for Gardner High School and then Rocky. And uh, Cooper's a really good guard, and I think he's back next year. And going with my formula, third-place team gets the guy up there in the top three, and that's Colin Cast Castellis for Glacier. Gets a rebounding machine. Had 27 Saturday morning in that, uh, in that overtime win that got him to the consolation game. Didn't quite have the stats in the third place game, but he made some shots. Um, and really just, you know, we talked about him, the Dennis Rodman of the Western Noble A. He's not the tallest kid, but he gets a ton of rebounds and uh, really anticipates where the ball is going to come down and, and fights hard for it. It's fun to watch. Um, no, no, turning, no. Back to Hell, turning back to Hellgate, you know, speaking of rebounding, Donovan Hedgeswith was really good for him. He's got a high arcing little fadeaway that he can score over big, big people, bigger people inside. And another guy just really is good on the boards. Um, rounding out my top five was Billy Carlson, a forward for West. <clears throat> and then I, um, I got a couple of Glacier kids in there in the, in the second five. Cadrian Bowles, who um, really had a, a cool senior season. You know, he was a reserve. Then he started. And once he started, he played well enough that uh, they just kept him in there. And, you know, the team kept winning and he kept making shots. And uh, so I got him number six. Then I got the Hellgate guard, he's Zant. He didn't have a great scoring game Saturday night, but he handled the ball well. And then I think in the semifinal, he had 17. So, easy call there. Um, after Easton, I had the Gallatin shooter, Eli Hunter. A little bit of a volume shooter, but man, he got hot a couple times at a 30-point game. And then at my ninth spot, I've got Noah Dowler, who I think, if I can get it up right, if I remember right, had 47 rebounds in four games. Um, and, and just, you know, as as uh, Costello said, he, he's just a presence. You know, he's six seven. He kind of nailed down the uh, made a tough team score down low. Um, didn't get credited with a lot of block shots. They changed quite a few, and then he was getting a, just a ton of rebounds. So that's number nine. Um, Ten eleven, I gave to a couple Bozeman kids. Kellen Harrison was their most consistent player. Cash Embry hit a shot from about thirty thirty three feet Saturday morning to get the Hawks into the consolation game. And then at number 12, Skyview has a, a really good player named Lane Love um, who scores a ton of points. So that's my 12. Um, I thought the the MVP pick was an easy one. Connor Dick is just a force, just a smooth player. Yeah, smooth is a good way to put it. Just one of those guys, I believe he's a lefty, just kind of every time he had the ball in his hands when I watched him at that Western double-A, you were expecting something, and nothing was forced. It was all easy, smooth. And you mentioned Dowler and his ability to impact games around the rim on defense and rebounding, and he comes to mind as a player who you can't look at the stat sheet and – truly know how much of an impact he makes because he could have been a little more selfish at times, forced his shot here and there, tried to kind of make his mark on offense, but it just felt like he was always like, I'm playing my role. I'm the dude holding down the paint. 
protecting the rim. I mean, he, ne- he wasn't worried about being anything flashy. And on a team like Glacier, finished third in the state, kind of like head switch with Hellgate. You need those guys who just do the dirty work, scrappy, and just wanted to take that second to mention that. I guess um, if there's anything else you wanted to mention with all tournament teams, feel free. If not, I did have a couple other questions just regarding kind of the Wolfpack and the Bravets this season and just kind of summon that all up. Yeah, well, we could we could start with the Wolfpack and Dowler. I mean, I think he had six points right away Saturday morning. Um, he's one of those guys where you know they they do go inside first. So, and I think a lot of their offense is predicated on being able to get the ball inside, mm-hmm. not necessarily to score, but to draw attention. And uh, you know, when Hellgate beat them pretty good at uh, divisionals, they they made the uh, entry passes really hard to complete. So, um, he's a big target. He got the ball inside and. He, He's always going to get a couple shots early, and if he makes them, uh, he he keeps shooting. If he doesn't, if they're not going in, then he starts kicking. And uh, it's a very it was just a very unselfish Glacier team. Um, I thought it was pretty special Saturday night. The T Mac who was starting before he got hurt, and the kid who was moved in, Tyler McDonald, he had a couple of huge threes in that consolation game. One of them banked in. The bank was open, but it counts, and uh, it's a cool moment for him too. Yeah, and like you said, absolutely, just from watching that Glacier team down the stretch, they were just very unselfish. It always felt like they were looking for that next man up. We haven't even really mentioned him too much, but they had Ty Olsen, kind of the de facto point guard of that team, a guy who every time I looked at the stat line, I was like, man, I I was expecting a bigger game from him, but it's because he was so unselfish. They always were looking for that open shooter in the corner, find the open man, kick it to Dallas, let him make the hockey assist. So, no, you're totally right, just an unselfish team. And, hey, it shows you finished third in the state. As for the Brave Eds, if you kind of – kind of similar where they had four really core players who you could say really had an impact. And then the players around them really did a great job of doing their role. If you wanted to kind of just kind of fill our audience and on what made this brave vets team so special this year as well. Yeah. I, I think when they started playing, you know, Matty Moy and Akilah Kubi as freshmen, you, you figure by the time they're seniors, they're going to, they're going to have something put together. And then when they were sophomores, Kennedy Moore was getting big minutes as a freshman and making some circus shots and, you know, she's she's a junior. They basically played six girls. I mean, they they moved Sammy Dalliger um, in there to get some minutes late, but basically they played six. Four of them were seniors: uh, Moy, Kubi, Shenard, and then Tally Miller, who was critical to Friday Night Swim because she she is the one in the boxing one that they threw at Brianna Williams in the second half when they beat Skyview. So those four girls are gone. Kennedy Moore is a is a nice. Nice nucleus to build around. Um, the only other girl that played huge minutes was Celie Vandenbosch, a junior. She came off the bench for him. So we'll see what happens next year. But I think they got some, they got some talent coming up. I think the GV team was pretty solid. Um, I think they're well coached. You know, Sam Tudor um, ran the show pretty well, I thought. And, you know, he got the girls good shots, good looks all, all season long. And sometimes – they don't fall. They didn't shoot a great percentage all year, but they always seem to make the clutch shot. They won so many close games. And uh, even at the end, when he called a timeout with four seconds left, you know, it, it's like, uh, do, do you have a five-point play? Well, maybe they do because they pulled out a lot of wins. I mean, we were there a week ago when when they hit the three to beat Hellgate at the buzzer. So, um, fun year. Back-to-back 19-win seasons is pretty amazing. Um, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have guessed it. Two years ago, Maddie Moy said the same thing. She just said, you know, I think they won two games in Sam's first year as coach. Um, it was a, you know, it was the uh, COVID year, so they didn't play a lot of games. Um, but the, the growth and the success they've had the last two years, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, honestly, I personally was not aware of that two-win season to bounce back two years later and a couple years later and being state runner-up. That's awesome. I, I do think you kind of mentioned it, but this team did have such a special knack for They never felt like they were out of a ball game. Just keep it close late, and they're going to have a chance. And last up, I will mention um, Coach Tudor. It did seem like I, he was one of those guys I was watching. The more I watched, the more I was kind of studying as a fan of the game because every time he ran an inbounds play or something out of a timeout, I mean, they always got a good look. So, no, a heck of a job coaching from him. Um, overall, just an awesome year of prep sports in the Valley with the Wolfpack and Brave Vets kind of leading the way at the Class AA level. Um, if there's anything else you want to throw out there, Fritz, uh, feel free. If not, great stuff. Just an awesome season of basketball. 
Yeah, you know, it's uh, kind of a relief to be through it. Now we still have, have some college basketball. I believe Tech men play tonight against the Statesmen from William Penn of Iowa. They play tonight at the NAI round of 16. Uh, Cats are playing Friday. That'll be fun. Hopefully they play close next year. I think they will. I think they're, this second year is going to be a good one for the Cats, a second chance at the dance. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of relieved and a little bit sad it's over for high school basketball for another year, but we've got some college hoops. We've got baseball coming up, and I may need to relax for a couple of days anyway. <laughs> No, 100%. I'm right there with you. I'm like, I love basketball. I've been itching to get out and run a little hoops myself after watching all this, but I definitely need a little breather from covering it. So, no, I'm right there with you. Absolutely, like, an epic season. But, yeah, no, it was a whirlwind last couple weeks, especially with so many local teams here in the Valley having postseason success. It, You know, it's hard to keep up with that after a while. Just a lot of fun. But thank you so much, Fritz. Like you said, looking, looking forward to all this college hoops action. We'll see how that shakes out for – our NAAI or NAIA schools and then the NCAA tournament coming up. So awesome stuff. Thank you, Fritz. And we'll uh, talk to you soon. Sounds good, Josh. All right. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Awesome stuff as always from the one and only Fritz neighbor of the daily interlake. What a jam packed show. Thanks again to Big Fork head coach Courtney Gunlock for jumping on earlier, talking about that Val's first ever state title and the move up to Class A next year, the opportunity to coach her daughters, all kinds of stuff there. That was a great interview. Thank you again to Fritz for taking the time to recap that Class AA tournament. A lot of action in that tournament, no doubt. Just absolutely jam-packed. So, yeah, no fun stuff. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening to this week's episode of the interleague sports now i'm josh dugan i'm out and thanks as always y'all have a good one